trigonometric integrals and trigonometric transformations. So what are the tools in here? One, in the event that you have the integral of sine raised to the n of u du or cosine raised to the n of u du where n is an odd integer, please take note of this. If n is odd, what are the tools that we can use? It's basically the Pythagorean tool. Cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. For example, you have here cosine cube of 2x dx. So you know for a fact that you cannot apply any basic integration formulas to integrate this. So in here, I already provided you with the solution. But later on, in some examples, we will be solving. So in here, what I do here is I separate one cosine and then a cosine squared. So I would separate a single one and the rest, I'll leave it here so that the rest will be even power. And then if I apply the Pythagorean relationships, I can see that cosine squared is basically one minus sine squared. And then what we do here is we distribute. Once you distribute, that becomes cosine 2x dx, and then sine squared 2x, cosine 2x dx. The reason why it has a one half is because if the u is 2x, the du has to be 2 dx. Therefore, I have to bring out a one half. Again, in here, when you look at this, which is more complicated? Definitely the one that has a higher power. So if the u is sine of 2x, the du is 2 cosine 2x dx, right? Therefore, I need a 2. I need a 1 half. And then in here on the left, what's the integral of cosine? It's just sine. So 1 half of sine 2x. What's the integral of the power? Ah, okay. Sine to the third over 3. So I hope you can follow this. So let's go to another example. The rule is to separate a singular one and then the rest, let's just leave it outside. So e to the x and then maybe you can have sine raised to 4 of e to the x and then sine of e to the x dx. And then the tool to, you, to use is sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. Since you have a sine raised to the 4, that means I can use that. I can say 1 minus cosine squared e to the x and then squared. And then the e to the x here, maybe we can just bring it here together with the other one. Let's expand 1 minus 2 cosine squared of e to the x plus cosine to the 4 of e to the x e to the x sine of e to the x dx. So when we distribute, this becomes e to the x sine of e to the x minus 2 cosine squared e to the x sine the last would be cosine to the 4 e to the x e to the x sine of e to the x and then everything is dx. So if you ask in here, if the u is e to the x, the du is e to the x dx. Ah, all right. So that means for the first term, we can re readily integrate that. That one can be integrated as negative cosine of e to the x. No problem with that. Look at the second term which is more complicated. You can see that the cosine is squared. Therefore, if you say that the u is cosine of e to the x, the n is equal to 2, the du is negative sine e to the x, sine u du, so e to the x dx. So what do we have here? There is a negative sign. Let's check. We have the sine, we have the e to the x. So that means we don't need anything anymore. 
this one can be plus cosine to the 3 e to the x over 3. Can you follow, guys? Yes, sir. The problem is the last one. Let's see if it can be integrated. If u is cosine of e to the x, n is equal to 4, e u is negative sine e to the x times e to the x dx. Oh, okay, I have that. But I don't have the negative sign. That means minus cosine to the fifth of e to the x over 5. This is basically um, just applying the tools that we have. Now, another one. What if you have the combination of sine and cosine? So take note. Um, we placed here different powers. One is n, one is m, so that you can see that they can have different powers. At least one of the exponents is an odd integer. So what do we do? If at least one of them is an odd integer, this one, the tool, is still the same. So how does that work? An example is this one. This is to the third. This is to the fourth. So what we do, just like rule number one, what, what happens? We look at the odd power. We focus on that odd power. And then what happens is we split one of them. So split a single one. The remaining one is sine squared. And what happens is that applying the tool, the sine squared could be changed to 1 minus cosine squared so that everything on the left will be cosine and then the remaining one is just the sine. So this one is cosine to the 4 sine x dx minus cosine to the 6 sine x dx. And then again, applying the power rule. So this one basically is cosine x and then du is negative sine x. The power in here is 6. The power in here is 4. Therefore, it's simply power rule. But then for the first one, we need a negative sign. That's why I supplied it. Second one, I don't need a negative sign anymore. So it's plus cosine to the 7, x over 7 plus c. That's to the fifth. So what we do here is we separate a cosine to the fourth x and simply a cosine of x. At the bottom, there's a square root of sine of x. So what we can do here on top is basically 1 minus sine squared x, but then that is squared because that's to the fourth. Cosine of x dx at the bottom, that's the square root of sine x. So if we expand the one on top, that gives us 1 minus 2 sine squared of x plus sine to the 4 of x. Everything is multiplied to cosine of x dx. At the bottom, we have the square root of sine x. So when we apply, when we divide everything, I can safely say that sine to the negative one half of x minus two sine squared. So two minus one half sine to the three halves of x plus sine to the seven halves of x. And then everything is multiplied to cosine of x dx. So which one is more complicated? Even if you multiply that, the sign is the more complicated one. So you can say that maybe it's power rule. So if u is sine of x, n is negative one half, du is cosine of x. In here, n is three halves. In here, n is seven halves. So maybe basically all of them are just power rule. So negative one half plus one is one half. You don't need the two, let's bring it out. So five halves x over five halves plus nine halves x over nine halves and then plus c. Therefore, this is basically two square root of sine x minus four fifths sine x. If you want, you can just say five halves outside, it's okay. 
plus 2 over 9. If you want here, you can just say 9 halves. So basically, for the first two cases, you notice we have applied the power formula. But you have to be able to transform. That's why it's trigonometric transformations. Okay. So let's go to the third case. So here, if you have the same, look at this, sine of uh, u raised to the n du or cosine of u raised to the n du, but then n is even, what is the tool that we need to use? I need you to recall this one. Cosine squared is simply one half of one plus cosine two x. This is one half, one minus cosine of two x for the sine squared of x. So let's just take this first. For example, sine squared of three x all over two, this is squared. So maybe we can apply the tool. The tool is one minus cosine of two x, whatever that angle is. So when you multiply, that cancels out. You're left with, um, if you distribute, one half and then integral of, basically just cosine of 3dx. So in here, you don't have a problem because that one is readily integrable. You just need to have a three in here. You have to have a one third, right? So basically this is one half x. This is minus one sixth sine because the integral of cosine is sine of 3x plus c. So this one, I'm sure there's no problem. In here, what is the tool that we need to use for cosine? It's basically 1 half of 1 plus cosine of 2x. Recall this. 1 half 1 plus cosine 2x. The other one's 1 half 1 minus cosine of 2x. All right. So maybe here, what we can do here is the whole thing is simply replaced by this. We don't need the one half. Let's bring it out. One plus cosine of two x dx. All right. So integral of one dx plus one half integral of cosine of two x dx. So the first term, we don't have a problem. It's simply x. The second term, if the u is two x, the du is simply two dx. So I just need to multiply at two. I have to have another one half outside. So this is simply one fourth. What's the integral of cosine, guys? Sine. Sine of 2x plus c. So this is your answer. So this one, where m, both are even. So if both are even, what are we going to use? Is it the Pythagorean or the half angle? Oh. So half angle identity c, the half angle identities. And then you have to take note that this one is one of the most common ones, but most forgotten that the sine 2x is basically 2 sine x cosine x. They're both even. If you want to use, let's just say, note, sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. You can say, oh, that's sine x and cosine x being multiplied. It's just that it's squared. It's okay. If you want, you can change it to integral of sine 2x all over 2 squared dx. So when they are the same, I can say, ah, this one, I'll just bring out one fourth. And then take note that sine 2x squared is simply this one. And then if it's even, what we do here is uh, one half times one minus cosine of 2 theta, but then it's already 2, so it becomes a 4x sine squared is 1 half of 1 minus cosine 2 theta. So 1 half, 1 minus cosine 2, but then that's already 2, so it becomes a 4. We don't need that 1 half, it becomes a 1 8 outside. So 1 8 of the integral of dx 
minus the integral of cosine 4 x dx. This is simply 1 8 x. What do I need to multiply in here, guys? Multiply by 1 fourth. Here is 4, so outside is 1 fourth. This one is simply 1 over 32 sine 4x plus c. So this is one method. The other method is if we apply 1 half, 1 plus cosine 2x multiplied to 1 half, 1 minus cosine of 2x dx. Some people would do this. And then 1 half, 1 half, they just bring out 1 fourth. Isn't it that 1 plus and minus, it becomes 1 minus cosine squared 2x. Am I correct here? Yes, sir. And then, isn't it that 1 minus cosine squared is simply sine squared 2x dx? Yes, sir. So it goes back to becoming that. So it depends. Like some people would do this first. They're more comfortable doing this. And some would do this. Because honestly, with me, I do this. But a lot of people would forget using this property they already go straight to this what you have to remember is that when you end up with an even power ah okay even power it's always the half angle odd power it's pythagorean properties some more examples what if they are not of the same power okay it's okay still apply the half angle but then the other one is squared and then the ugly thing here is that you have to expand. And then after expanding, you expand even more. That's why you'll have a lot. See, imagine this. So two terms, and then this is three terms. You'll end up having a lot of terms. And this is very, very prone to mistakes. I'll just show you the solutions. I won't go so much into that. However, look at this. This is the simplified form of this one. So this is a simplified form, but in your simplified form, this is another case. You apply the half angle here. What do you apply here, guys? Pythagorean. The Pythagorean, this is type 1. So it's a bit, those ones are changed into this. This one, you can immediately integrate. I know you can integrate this. I know that the cosine 2x, you can integrate that. The problem is the type 3, you have to go back to this. And the type 1, you have to resort back to this. And then reintegrate that one. It gives you, so you can cancel out terms. And when you simplify, finally, you'll end up having this. Some of you might ask whether you need to multiply this inside. It's okay. So what about, guys, if it's this term, what can we do? Can I do the same thing as what I did earlier? Yes, sir. Since they have the same powers, what I do here is maybe 2 sine x, cosine x is sine 2x. So sine x, so that means this one is sine 2x over 2, but then everything is raised to the fourth power. I can factor out 1 over 16. I don't need that. So this one, I'm only left with sine to the 4 of 2x dx. At least we're happier. Why? Because now it's just a single term as opposed to two separate terms. Now, what is the degree? Odd or even? Even. Even. What's the tool? Half angle identity. Very good. Sine squared of theta is one half, one minus cosine of two theta. So it's already to the four. So maybe what I can do is one half, one minus cosine of four x. But then I need to square this. Because the whole thing here is simply sine squared of two x that whole thing inside, and that's to the 4. So that means you have to square that. When you square this, this is 1 fourth. There's 1 uh, one fourth and then 1 over 60. Uh, 1 over 60 first. Yeah, and then this one, 2, 2 cosine 4x plus cosine squared of 4x dx. So in here, you don't have a problem with the 1 over 64 integral of the x. This one becomes 1 over 32 cosine of 4x dx. And then the other one is 1 over 64 cosine squared of 4x 
dx. It's 1 over 64x. What about the second term? Not what yet. do I need to multiply? Isn't it I need 4? So I need a 1 fourth. 1 over 128. The integral of cosine is sine of 4x. So no problem with that. Look at this one again, right? So is it Pythagorean or is it the half angle? Is this odd or even? If it's even, it's half angle. And then if it's odd, it's the Pythagorean. Um, this one becomes 1 half 1 plus cosine of 8x dx. Let's go to another one. This one, guys, it's a very, very, very helpful tool. But then this one is only applicable when you have limits. And then the limits are very, very specific. So please take note of this. You are given limits. The limits 0 to pi over 2 all the time. It should be in this form. M and N are both positive and greater than 0 or equal to 0. The U starts from 0 until pi over 2. So those are the two limits. So what happens, guys, is this. Look at the first power. All the time, whatever that power is, subtract 1. And then subtract 3. So if the power is 9, the first term that you see is 8 times 6 times 4. There, it says there end with either a 2 or 1. So times 2, you can't multiply by 0 because everything else becomes 0. So this one, n, becomes n minus 1, n minus 3, etc., etc., until it's 2 or 1 as well. And then lastly, for the denominator, you add the terms first, m plus n, and then subtract 2 all throughout, and then multiply this by an alpha. That alpha multiplier is this. If both are even, the alpha multiplier is pi over 2. But if not, the alpha multiplier is simply 1 if either of them is odd. So only both even, it becomes this. But if either of them is odd, it becomes 1. It's a note here that if the first factor in the, in, in the numerator is less than 1, after applying the Wallace formula, you replace that factor by unity. So these are some examples. So this one, it's quite, you know, it's quite daunting because you can say, oh, that's to the 15, that's to the 14. There's, there's a lot of application of type 1, type 2, type 3. But take note, what are the limits? It's from 0 to pi over 2. According to Wally's formula, the first power is 15, the next is 14, therefore 14, and then subtract 2 from it all the time. 14, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, and then end with here it's 14, so what should be the first term? 13, 11, 9, 7, 6. So you multiply them. And then at the denominator, what's the sum of the two? 29, right? 29. So 29, 27. So you might say, oh, that's quite long. It's okay. And then look at this. Not both are even. Therefore, the multiplier should be 1. Okay, maybe we can cancel out terms. So 13 up to the 3. It's actually this one cancels out. And then maybe some of them you can still cancel out. Or you can use your calculators. For example, um, 27 in here, 21, you know, there's a 3 in here that can cancel with the 27. So if you simplify this, you can cancel out some terms. The 15 and 10. So this is 3. That is 2. The... 6 and the 3, that's just 2, right? What else? The 12 and the 21, so that's 7, this is 4. The 14 and the 7, so 2 to the 12 all over 3 to the 3rd times 5 squared times 17, 19, 23, 29. So if I don't have a calculator, this would be my answer. Basically, I just express them as powers of their prime factors. Because this one, it's quite long. Let's try another one. The power is to the 9 and to the first. And then look at this. Okay, 0 to pi over 2, we're safe. We can use the Wallis formula. What is the first term for the sign? Eight. 8, very good. So 8, 6, 4, 2. What about this one? 
the power is one. Can we still subtract one? No more. Because no more. the end should be either one or two. So let's just write one. And then at the bottom, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. So the 6, 4, 2 cancels out. The 8, 6, 4, 2 cancels out. You're left with 1 over 10. Let's try another one. That's 8. So 7, 7 5, 3, 1. That's 2. When you subtract 1, it's 1. Ah, still okay. And then at the base, it's 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. So try, try cancel out because these are both even. The multiplier is pi over 2. So in here, you can cancel out whatever you can cancel. You're left with, yeah, so this one, I would appreciate it actually if it's in this form because this is a power of prime factor. Now, what about this one? You can say, sir, there's no sign. It's okay. 5, 3, 1. If there's no sign, just supply 1. But, um, of course, at the base, you have to add the power. So it's just 6. You can't add it to anything because there's nothing. So 6, 4, 2. And then, since it's just that one, the multiplier is pi over 2 because an x to the 0, um, the cosine to the 0, sorry, 0 is sort of like an even number, right? Therefore, that's pi over 2. So try to cancel out what you can cancel. The answer is 5 pi over 32. For Wallis, it only works when the limits are from 0 and pi over 2. 0 and pi over 2. And one of the requirements is that the x values here are the same. If one is 2x, the other is x, it won't work. It has to be the same. And then the powers, so whatever those powers are, so long as they are positive or zero, it's okay. So let's try. Look at this. In this one, the powers are both even, yes, but the angles are not the same. And even if the angles here, you know, are not the same, look, it's zero to pi over four. So that means we can't apply Wallis. But we have to take note that sine two theta is two, sine theta, cosine theta. So in here, Let's just leave it be, leave it, leave it like that first. Can I say that this one is 2 sine 2x cosine 2x squared cosine squared 2x dx? Can I say it's like this? And then when we apply that square, that becomes sine squared 2x cosine squared squared so cosine to the 4x dx. But still, I cannot apply Wallis because according to you earlier, Wallis may only be applied when the limits are from 0 to pi over 2. If I say that my u is 2x, what is my du, guys? Isn't it 2dx? So I can say that your dx is basically du over 2. Okay, I have a point. Okay, u and x. The limits are for letter x. It says there the limits are from 0 to pi over 4. But take note, if we let u be equal to 2x, what's 2 times 0, guys? 0. 2 times pi over 4? Pi over 2. So that means if we let this equal to u, cosine squared u, and then dx is basically du over I can make everything in terms of u. So my limits are now 0 to pi over 2. So I can simplify. This one is just 2. Okay. I don't need the 2. I can bring it out. Okay. Look at this. The limits are 0 to pi over 2. It's same. U, U. Can I use Wallis formula? Yes, sir. Okay. What's the Wallis formula for this? I sorry, it's up two, it's four. What will be the power for sine? One. One. What about for cosine? Three times one. Three times. Three times one. Very good. What about the bottom? That becomes two six times, times one. But you add four them. Times. Six, 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 four, two. Six, four, two. And then they're both even. So what's my multiplier? Pi over two. Pi over 2. So let's just cancel that. Let's cancel this. So what's the answer? Pi over to be both 
2x or both u. This is what I did. When I substituted u for letter x, I had to change the limits because Wally's only works from 0 to pi over 2. Uh, sir, how did you change the limits for again? So for the limits. So in here, look. These are for letter x. These are for letter u. Originally, it's 0 up to pi over 4. But take note, u is equal to 2x. If this is for x, I would like to change this. 0 times 2. Yeah. 0. Pi over 4. Multiply that by 2. Pi over 2. Yes. So basically, you plug in those values in the x to become a letter u. So this one, it's, you know, from trigonometry, you know, it's, it's basically the same. Sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine of theta. So that becomes this one. I'll skip this. I'll go to the other cases. All right, let's go to another case. So the first four cases, when you notice, they're all for sine and cosine. And then if we um, would... Re just recall, if it's odd, use the Pythagorean. If it's even, use the half angle. For this one, if it's purely tangent or purely cotangent, and n is a positive integer, the tool is the Pythagorean identity again. So those Pythagorean identities. So an example, that one. So it says their Pythagorean identity. Therefore, this one I can say tangent squared x and tangent x. So it's it's similar to an odd power earlier for the sine. So this one, tangent squared is basically secant squared x minus 1 times tangent x dx. Therefore, um, secant squared x tangent x dx minus the integral of tangent x dx. Mm -hmm. So in here, it might be a bit confusing. You would say, ah, let u be secant squared. Take note, u is tangent n is equal to 1. What's the derivative of a tangent x, guys? Secant squared x. So the answer for this one is tangent x to the second power over second power. This one, what, what's the integral of tangent? We have a formula for this. This is an ln of yes. cosine x plus c. Again, for this one. So you, you'd say, sir, that's even power, it's okay. Because for tangent and cotangent, it doesn't really matter. What you do is separate an even power. Because if it's odd, of course, you separate one of the even powers. This is important, the even power, to be able to apply this. Now, in here, it's already even. Just separate a smaller one. And then you change one of them, becomes cosecant, and then you distribute. So you end up having this. Now, what would you choose? A cotangent or a cosecant squared as your letter U? Which one would you choose? What's the derivative of cotangent? What's cosecant the derivative? squared. Yes. So if the U is cotangent 3x, the DU is negative 3 cosecant squared 3x. So you already have the derivative in there. So your U here has to be this one. It's power rule. For this one, ah, cotangent squared, look at this. You separate it again. You apply Pythagorean again because you don't have an integral for the cotangent squared. But when you apply the Pythagorean in here, you have an integral for a cosecant squared. So in here, you just need a negative 3 and negative 1 third. In here, that's the answer. The integral of cosecant squared, when you multiply by 3 and bring out 1 third, it's just cotangent. So negative cotangent, that's why. It changes in sign in here. And then integral of dx is basically x plus c. So you have the answer in here. The other one, if it's secant and cosecant. So the other one, we had tangent and uh, co cotangent in here, secant and cosecant. Mm -hmm. So if it's secant and cosecant, and n is a positive integer, you apply again the Pythagorean. So either Pythagorean identity or half-angle formulas, but the half-angle formulas are only for sine and cosine. So the first four cases, you know, that's where you can choose from. Um, but for the, the tangent, the secant, you basically 
apply the Pythagorean formulas. So those, example, cosecant to the 6. So split a square and then just leave another square. Why? Because if I would change a cosecant to what? Cotangent. Yeah, cotangent, right? So cotangent can form. If the u is a cotangent, the derivative of a cotangent is a cosecant squared. So you have the derivative in here already. You're forcing it to have the derivative. So for this one, it's readily integrable because this one is negative cotangent. That's the answer. In here, you choose the cotangent as your u because you have the du. You choose the cotangent as your u because you have the du. U is cotangent. The du is negative cosecant squared. So you just basically have different powers. So this one is negative cotangent. The other one is negative 2 cotangent to the 3 over 3. This is negative cotangent to the 5 over 5. So case 7. Don't worry, there are 10 cases. But then they're all roughly the same. If you have a combination now, tangent and secant, cotangent and cosecant, they're the ones... Positive integer. What is the tool? What's basically the tool that we're using? See, um, all of them. You basically just have to apply the Pythagorean identities for each of those cases. You, you, you just have to try in all of these cases. So from case uh, 7 up to case 10, you just basically apply this. So some example. All right, so in here, what do I do if it's like this? It's a combination of 7 and 8. So what we do here is just split a secant squared. The secant, what do I, what do, I do with the secant squared? Ah, I'll make it tangent. So one of them, and I leave one of them in, here, in there so that if I choose my u to be the tangent and the power is 7, the derivative of a tangent is a secant squared. I already have it there, secant squared. So this becomes tangent to the 8. This becomes tangent to the 6 plus c. Sometimes, if you use a type 8, what you want to separate is this one. You split one whole tangent and one whole secant. It becomes this. You, because in here, there are several ways in, in which you can integrate. And some of the answers may be different, but then they're both correct. It depends on what you try to modify or manipulate. So in this case, what they tried manipulating is um, the tangent, it becomes a tangent to the 4. The secant, it becomes a secant cube. But they separated one tangent and one secant in here. So the tangent to the 4, they change that to some secant here. It becomes all secant. Guys, what's the derivative of a secant? Secant x tan x. There. There you go. So they change the tangent to a secant because they provided the derivative of a secant in here. Secant tangent. That's why everything can be a secant. So unlike in the first one, look at this. In the first one, when they separated a secant squared, secant squared is the derivative of what, guys? The derivative of tangent. Yes. So if that's a derivative of tangent, that means everything on the left should be tangent. That's why they change everything to tangent because you have the derivative, which is secant squared. But when you choose to make it, to, to try to separate a secant tangent, secant tangent is a derivative of a secant. Therefore, the tangent here has to disappear. That has to be a secant. So that, imagine that this is the answer. This answer is equivalent to the answer earlier. Yeah, they're, they're entirely or totally different looking, but then they're both correct because it depends on what you have selected. That's why cases um, 7 up to 10, it's a case-to-case -case basis. So I'll provide more examples. So this one. It's integration by parts, basically. So you separated one secant and then a secant squared. So this is just to show. Imagine a type 10 integration by parts leading to a type 9. 
So, so but then this one is another type 10. So what, what happens is that this was moved to the other side, just like in our integration by parts, guys. So I'll just show you this one. Since there's two of secant cube already, whatever the answer here is, just divide it by two. Your takeaway from this is the most common given ones are the first six times. The first four is for uh, are for sine and cosine, basically. Again, Pythagorean or the half-angle formulas. The cases uh, five, six are for secant and the tangent. See, secant, tangent, and cotangent. Five and six there. So you apply the Pythagorean as well. For cases seven onwards, it's basically trial and error. You, you can have different, um, different forms of answers, but what do you need to apply? Still, Pythagorean identities.